What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. And in this next video, what we gotta do is take these three exponential functions and we're going to graph them. So I'm gonna graph all three of these with just a simple of table of values, but as the video goes on, I'll talk about perhaps different formats you might see these in and different characteristics of these exponential functions and just exponential functions in general. So starting with number one, we have f of x equals four to the power of x. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick three x values to work with. And with exponential functions, usually what I choose is negative one, zero, and then positive one. See what's happening around that y-axis. So if we plug in negative one, so what's f of negative one gonna be for the first function? It's gonna be four to the power of negative one, which would be one over four to the power of positive one, right? We can bring this down, change the exponent to a positive, which would be one over four, which would be 0 0.25. So this here is gonna be 0.25. If we plug in zero for x, four to the power of zero, anything to the power of zero is just one. And then if we plug in one for x, four to the power of one is just gonna give us four. So those are the three points we can graph. Now, one thing I wanna mention is that all exponential functions, they have a horizontal asymptote. And it's always gonna be the value that's added to them, right? So if we make a general expression for an exponential function as b to the power of x plus c, the horizontal asymptote is always gonna be that c value. Now this could be more complex here, I kept it simple, but if we add all the potential transformations that can happen, we can have something multiplying this exponential function, and then we can have a k value, and then we can have the exponential function shifting left or right. All right, so this part can be more complex. So you can have this, but then there's still just going to be that C value. That C value could be positive or negative. And the horizontal asymptote of any of these kinds of functions, no matter how complex the exponential function gets, the horizontal asymptote is always going to be y is equal to that C value. So notice in this case, in this first function, it's like a plus zero over here. There's no C value there. And so the horizontal asymptote would be at Y is equal to zero. And that's usually the first thing I start off with drawing when I'm graphing an exponential function. In this case, it's at Y is equal to zero, which is just the X axis. So this here is going to be the horizontal asymptote for this function. And then we could just plot the point. So we'll have Let's say we go one, two, three, four. We'll have negative one and 0.25. Let's say that's like over here. We'll have zero and one, which is here. And then we'll have one and four, which is like up here. So if we connect all of these, we end up getting a function like that. Right, so as x approaches negative infinity, if you keep plugging in more negative x values, like negative 10, negative 100, you're gonna get smaller and smaller y values, but it's never gonna hit zero, right? It's never gonna touch that horizontal asymptote. All right, so that, this here, is how this first function looks like. Now, what about the second function? Well, the second function, notice how there's also like a plus zero over here. So this here has a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero. So the horizontal asymptote is the x-axis again. But here we have a negative exponent. So we have two to the power of negative x. And so we can make a table of values with this using those same x value, so we'll do negative one, zero, and then positive one. Now if we plug in negative one for x, we'll have negative times negative one, which is positive one. Two to the power of positive one is two. If we plug in zero here, we'll have two to the power of zero, which is one. And then if we plug in one here, we'll have two 
to the power of negative one, which is like one over two to the power of positive one, which is like one over two. Right, just in general, this here, if we have a to the negative x, that's equal to one over a to the power of positive x. That's the exponential rule that we're using. And so this would end up being 0 0.5. So if we graph this, again, we know that there's a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. And then we'll have, let's space this out a little bit, 1 and 2. And we'll go 1 and 1. So we'll have negative 1, negative 1 and 2. It'll be up here. 0 and 1 would be over here. And then we'll have 1 and 0.5, which would be like over here. So let me extend this. So if we match these up, that's basically what's happening. Right? So it looks different than that standard exponential function because of this negative exponent. Right? It's like a negative k value, which is like basically taking 2 to the power of x, which is just like a standard exponential function, the same shape as 4 to the power of x is, but then we are reflecting it in the y-axis in order to get this shape over here. Now, another thing I want to mention is that this 2 to the power of negative x, it could be in a different format. So using that same exponential rule, we can rewrite this as one over two to the power of positive x. And then this here, if you remember, if we have a fraction to the power of x, it's like taking the numerator to the power of x and then the denominator to the power of x. So we can rewrite this as one, o, uh, one to the power of x, right? One is the same as one to the power of anything. It's always just gonna equal one. The reason why I added that exponent is because we can rewrite this as one over two to the power of x. So y equals two to the power of negative x is actually the exact same thing as one over two to the power of x. So a lot of times when you see a fraction that's between zero and one, remember a fraction doesn't necessarily have to be between zero and one, like 3 over 2, for example. If you had 3 over 2 to the power of x, it would just look like that shape. But if you have a fraction or a decimal for the base of an exponential function between 0 and 1, it's going to have this kind of shape over here. All right, so that's how 2 to the power of negative x or 1 over 2 to the power of x looks like. Moving on to number 3, notice how... In this case, there's an actual c value. We have 2 to the power of negative 2x plus 5. So there's a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 5. So that's the first thing I'm actually going to draw. I'm going to draw the, you know what? Let's give myself some more room here. I'm going to draw the horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 5. So that's going to be the horizontal asymptote in this case. Now, same thing, let's plug some values in. We can plug in negative 1, 0, positive 1. If we plug in negative 1, we'll have negative 2 times negative 1, which is 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4, plus 5 would give us 9. If we plug in 0, we'll have 2 to the power of 0, which is 1, plus 5 would give us 6. And then if we plug in 1 over here, negative 2 times 1 is um, negative 2, 2 to the power of negative 2 would give us 1 over 2 to the power of positive 2, which would be 1 over 4, which would be 0.25, plus 5 would give us 5.25, like that. And so graphing these values relative to the horizontal asymptote, so this is not necessarily going to be to scale, but it helps in drawing that horizontal asymptote first so you know sort of where these points are going to go. So we got negative 1 and 9. So 9 is going to be like up here. We'll have 0 and 6, which would be like over here, let's say. Then we'll have positive 1 and 5.25, which is closer to that horizontal asymptote like that. 
right? And so if we connect these points, it's basically going to look like that. And you notice that if you plug in larger and larger values for x, maybe 10, 100, you'll notice that it gets closer and closer to that y value of 5, but it never hits that y value of 5. Right, so this function, that's how it looks like. Another format this could have been in is this 2 to the power of negative 2x. We can rewrite this as 2 to the power of 2 to the power of negative x, which would be 4 to the power of negative x. So another way this could be written is 4 to the power of negative x plus 5. This and this are the exact same thing. If you took both of these and you graphed them on Desmos, it would be the exact same graph. And then with this, using this, um, what we did with number 2, if you follow those same steps, you can actually rewrite this as 1 over 4 to the power of x plus 5. Right? So all three of these functions are the exact same thing. And I just wanted to show you that in case you run into any of these formats. Maybe you might feel comfortable working with something like this. Well, you could always take something like this and convert it to that. Or you could take this... Uh, absolute value of k, this 2, convert it so there's no number here in the exponent and you just put it in the base. So that's another thing you can do. So all three of these are the same, but no matter which one you get, that is how the graph looks like.